Hey guys, this is Andrews with Adam Audio, and today we're back with Music City Acoustics to talk about Diffusion. So we're here with Graham of Music City Acoustics. Um, before we jump into Diffusion and what it is, can you talk a little bit about Music City Acoustics and how it got started? So it all kind of started out of my need for acoustic treatments, trying to make my studio here in Nashville just sound better. I had a somewhat commercial facility here that I turned turned a house into a studio. Spent a lot of time trying to improve the sound of each of the tracking rooms and the control room. And through that process, ended up kind of accidentally starting Music City Acoustics. And we make all sorts of acoustic treatment products for home studios and then commercial facilities. Now with churches, restaurants, all sorts of stuff. We've done, I think, four videos up until this point, all talking about different facets of the acoustics industry. But we have yet to talk about Diffusion. So we'll start off with the most basic question of what is Diffusion and why is it important in a studio setting? Diffusion is um, kind of the opposite side of the spectrum in terms of absorption, so like a normal acoustic panel. Acoustic panels, you know, just for reference, are going to try to absorb that sound. So any energy that's in your room, it's going to try and stop it from reflecting or bouncing around off of those walls. Diffusion on the other side of things is going to reflect that sound. Normally in a studio setting, we want you to hear your speakers and not the room, or any distortion that the room's gonna impart on the sound of those speakers. So either through absorption or diffusion, we need to stop it from reflecting off the walls and the ceiling. Diffusion is going to still reflect it off of those walls, but do it in a really pleasing, more natural way. So as sound waves hit a diffuser, they will get broken up and then reflected more evenly throughout the room as opposed to like bouncing off of a wall, reflecting back with a ton of energy at one pin, like one pinpointed spot or location. So it's just a way to change the way a room sounds to make it more natural, more pleasing, without necessarily losing all the energy that you might otherwise have if you use an acoustic panel. So we have a couple different types of diffusers in front of us. You know, we have the Skyline slash primitive root diffuser, space coupling diffuser that we hung up in our office. What kind of diffuser do you use in different situations? Yeah, so the primitive root diffuser, this guy here, uh, or the Skyline diffuser, is probably the most common thing that people have seen before. Ironically enough, it's pretty much the last thing that you should put in a home studio. It is a fantastic diffuser. It diffuses both vertically and horizontally. And depending on the depth of them, you can get them to work at different frequencies. So the, the deeper the diffuser itself, the lower in frequency it will work. The smaller the blocks are, the higher in frequency it will work. So it's, it's a great diffuser. It's a very, produces a very natural, even type of diffusion, but it also requires a good amount of space in the room. So if you have like a home studio, anything that's like 10 by 12 feet or a normal kind of like extra bedroom space in a house, there's normally not enough space between the diffuser and you at the listening position or you at like the instrument and your microphones picking up that source for the diffusion to actually really take full effect because it has to be able to kind of bloom out into the room. Something like a space coupling diffuser, you know, if I, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but like if I pick this up, the shadows that this creates on this table are pretty, pretty crazy and all over the place. So this introduces all these tiny little coupled spaces from one another and that allows the sound waves as it hits it to bounce off of all these things, they get redirected in different directions and it creates a very open, natural sounding environment. So this is an awesome diffuser. If you have like a tracking space in your studio, it's incredible on drums, taking a small room and making it sound like it's much bigger than it is and much more natural and open sounding. The same thing can kind of apply like we did at your guys' demo room where we put it up above the listening position, increases or widens the stereo image, improves the depth of field. So these are an awesome option when you need some reflections or want to introduce a little bit more life into a room, but you don't have like the space for a primitive root diffuser. And then the third thing behind us, the uh, scatter faces is more of like a hybrid option. So this, it works in conjunction with an acoustic panel. And that's a super powerful thing for home studios or smaller spaces as well, because you know, for the most part, we need all of those walls and the ceiling to be treated with acoustic panels. Low frequencies are gonna bounce off of all of those surfaces. That will cause really sharp dips and peaks based off of boundary reflections and issues that that can create. And so there's not a lot of areas in a small studio or in a small room that you don't need acoustic panels. And having the scatter faces allows you to both get diffusion and scattering at high frequencies and at mid frequencies while not losing the absorption that we need for lower frequencies. So we're not just gonna be talking about Diffusion today, but we will actually be watching you build one from scratch, kind of showing you how you can do it DIY style. But before we do that, can we quickly talk about the spacing in between each board and what the importance of that is? On like the scatter face or to get, you know, most diffusers, you'll see like on these guys, you've got a series of different depths and the orientation of all of those is pretty specific to like a primitive root diffuser. Scatter faces 
are quite similar in that the main goal here is to break things up, but do that in an even, even way. So if you just had half of the panel covered, you might have the same amount of reflections happening, but they'd be very specular. So meaning like ray-like traveling, so like angle of incidence is gonna equal the angle of reflection. In a listening environment, that's not what you want because that's how you get a lot of focused energy reflecting back to the same spot. We wanna break it up as evenly as possible. So by having different gaps between the actual boards here and then having different widths, we can control where those reflections go uh, and how wide the dispersion pattern of that is. And Graham will actually be giving one of these primitive root diffusers away. So if you check in the description, you can sign up for both the Atom Audio and Music City Acoustics newsletter uh, to be entered to win. I think that covers a lot of what we wanted to talk about with diffusion. Uh, so now we're to the point of building one of the scatter faces. We're gonna let Mike kind of take it away from here. He's gonna show us how to put together a scatter face a little bit differently from how like the production models that we make, um, but with stuff that's really readily available and then you know pretty minimal tools. So anybody at home who's got a drill um, can pretty much do this. So we've got our one by threes and our one by twos here that we just picked up from Home Depot. And Mike and I are gonna show you how to break these down and turn them into a scatter face that you can build at home. To do this, you're just gonna need a few tools, primarily a drill. If you have a circular saw or a miter saw, that's awesome. If not, you can probably get your local hardware store to actually cut these down to length for you. In the link in the description, we've got a PDF that you can download that has all the cut lengths that you're gonna need as well as the spacing so you can put them together. And uh, yeah, let's jump into it. The one note on the wood, when you're at the store picking it out, you wanna try and pick out the straightest pieces you can find. For these, we just went and picked out common board. It's available both at Home Depot and Lowe's in one by three and one by two dimensions. So these boards are one and a half inches wide, and these boards are gonna actually be two and a half inches wide. Those are all the only two dimensions that we need to make up the scatter face. So you notice like this one's got a pretty solid bow to it. Fortunately, we only need about 16 inches of this one. The other ones we're gonna cut nearly in half, and those will be our longer pieces. It can be a little tricky, you might have to sort through a bunch of pieces, but they should eventually have enough wood in there that's pretty straight and isn't bowed, both on the length, and then you also wanna make sure that they're not twisted at all, so that they sit flat on your panels. So we're gonna jump over to the miter saw and cut these down to length. There's actually only two lengths or sizes that we're gonna need to cut. And so the top and bottom pieces, made out of the one by twos are gonna be 23 and seven eighths inches. And then all of our internal boards are gonna be 44 and seven eighths inches. And that will give us a final dimension for the scatter face that matches our four by two foot panels. When you first pick up your wood, the ends are gonna be rough and they're probably not going to be square or a perfect 90 degrees. So the first step is gonna be shaving off the end of the board so we have something straight to work with. Now that we got the end of the board cut and everything's square, we're gonna measure to 44 and 7 eighths, make a mark and cut this board to length. We'll need five of these one by twos and we'll need two of the one by threes, all cut to this 44 and 7 eighths length. Now that we got our vertical pieces cut, we're gonna do pretty much the same thing for our end pieces. We're just gonna cut off the end and mark it at 23 and 7 eighths. Now that we got the vertical pieces and the horizontal end pieces cut, we're gonna cut our last piece, which is 16 inches, and this is the cleat that will hold the scatter face on the panel. So now that we got all of our pieces cut, we're gonna lay everything out on the table to get an idea of how this is gonna go together and make our assembly process easy. You can set aside the 16 inch cleat. We won't need that until the very end of the assembly. And then we'll pick up our 23 and 7 eighths one by twos and set them at either end of the table. And then we're just gonna lay out the vertical pieces roughly, just kind of eyeball this and get an idea of where everything goes. So now we're getting ready to mark out all of our measurements on this end piece. So we're gonna mark either side of these vertical pieces so we know exactly where to screw them in when we get to that part of the process. So I'm referencing the PDF printout here and I know that I'm gonna go three inches down from that next mark and so on. So we'll do that kind of thing all the way down this end piece so we know exactly where to screw in each one of these vertical pieces. So I've measured our end piece here and I've laid out the sides of each vertical piece. 
And then I've also gone through and I've marked each space with an X where a board is going to go. So you can tell the difference between the gaps and the places where the boards are actually gonna end up. Then we're gonna transfer these lines to our other end piece so we don't have to do all that measuring again. So now that we've measured everything and we've transferred our lines to both of our end pieces, it's time to start screwing these boards together. I'm gonna use a clamp to hold down one of these vertical pieces, but if you don't have any clamps available, you could just get a friend or a buddy of yours to hold this down while you're drilling into it. So we're gonna need to drill two holes uh, so we can use two screws in each one of these vertical pieces at either end. It can be really helpful to put one of these screws in and then drill your next hole so that way everything stays aligned. Now I've got most of the scatter face assembled and I got one more step and that's the cleat. This is what's going to hold the scatter face on the panel and make it easily removable so you don't have to screw it in or nail it in or anything. The first step to doing that is gonna be to mark a center line on this 16 inch cleat and a center line on our scatter face. So I'm making a mark at eight inches on our 16 inch cleat. So now that we got that marked on our cleat and our scatter face, we can line up those lines and make sure that the cleat is centered on the scatter face. I'm gonna use some clamps to hold this in place. And then we're gonna drill our pilot holes and screw it in just like we did on the vertical pieces. So now our scatter face is fully assembled. At this point, you'd be ready to sand this down so you could get rid of all these pencil lines and any scuffs or marks that are on the wood to begin with. And then you could finish it however you like or just leave it as it is and use it in your studio. So we have just created this DIY scatter face. There's a couple differences between how you guys do it uh, versus how we did it today, but can you explain how you guys create yours yeah, specifically? for sure. Um, so first we start off with Baltic birch plywood. It's like super high quality for all of our end pieces. So we take a little bit of a different approach than like the way that Mike screwed them all together. Uh, we actually cut dados into these end pieces kind of like this. And then all of our one by twos and one by threes get glued into these slots here. So you get a really nice tight fit and just makes the front of everything look really clean. But you know, both options, if, if somebody wants to make one at home, uh, this is an awesome way to go. So I think that's a wrap for us, uh, Graham and everybody at Music City Acoustics. Thank you guys so much for showing us how you build these uh, scatter face diffusers. Uh, we hope you guys at home uh, learned something about diffusion and how to build your own. Be sure to like and subscribe and also don't forget that there is a giveaway for the Primitive Root Diffuser. Uh, you just got a link in the description where you can sign up for Music City Acoustics and Adam Audio Newsletter and you'll be eligible to win. Uh, I think that's good. 